down before the Lamb, each having a harp, and golden bowls full of what? Of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Question, where was incense offered in the Hebrew sanctuary? Incense was offered in the bowls in the holy place, at the altar of incense. Go with me to Revelation 8 verses 3 and 4 and you'll see very clearly where the incense or the prayers of the saints were offered. It says there in Revelation chapter 8 verses 3 and 4, Then another, another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. Which altar is this? Stood at the altar. Is this the altar of sacrifice or the, altar, the golden altar of incense? It's the one of incense. Let's continue reading. And he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Is that the same expression we found in Revelation 5 verse 8? Yes. With the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar. Where was that altar? In which apartment? In the holy place. That's right. Which was before the throne. Where is the throne? It's in the holy place according to this. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Now if you want further corroboration from the spirit of prophecy on this, uh, the lesser light which bears testimony to the greater light, the Bible, you can read Desire of Ages pages 833 to 835 where Ellen White describes in chapter 4 the preparation of the throne room in heaven for the arrival of Jesus with the angels and how Jesus entered the holy place of the sanctuary uh, amidst the rapturous song of the angels and how he received the scroll from the hand of the Father who was seated upon the throne. Ellen White makes it very clear that this whole scene is taking place holy place. So let me ask you, where does this first open door lead to? It leads into the holy place. At which historical occasion? At the ascension of Christ. Now, don't miss this next point. It's of critical importance. Can the open door, which is placed before the church of Philadelphia, refer to this open door? I'll let you digest that question for a moment. Can the door of the church of Philadelphia, the sixth church, be referring to the same door that was opened in Revelation chapter 4? It can't be. Because in Revelation chapter 4, the door was opened when? The door was opened when Jesus ascended to heaven. The sixth church is when? Way towards the end of church history. So is that door which is opened before the church of Philadelphia the same door which was opened at the ascension of Christ? Absolutely not. I hope that you're understanding my point. It's of critical importance. Now let's go to the second door which is opened in the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 19. This is a very important verse. I want you to notice what it says. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. Now I want to read this verse again because there's some very important items in it. It says here, the temple of God was opened in heaven. Now in Greek there are two words for temple. One is the word hieron, which refers to the totality of the temple, the whole building. That is not the word that is used here. The Greek word which is used here is naos which means inner shrine of the temple. It actually is referring to the most holy place of the sanctuary, which is open. Now, the first door, when it was opened, it led into where? To the holy place. This second door, when it is open, where does it lead to? It leads to the naos, or to the inner shrine of the temple. Because that's what the word naos means. 
So it says, then the temple or the inner shrine of God was opened. Must it have been closed till this point? Yes. What must it have been opened with? With the key of what? Of David. And why would Jesus be going in there? According to what we studied in Isaiah chapter 9. He would be going in there to perform a what? Of judgment in order to establish his kingdom. Now, it says, the naos of God was opened in heaven, and what was seen? And the ark of his covenant was seen in his naos. When this door is opened, what is seen in the naos? The ark of the covenant. Which apartment does this door lead to? It leads into the most holy place. So let me ask you, the key that opens the door opens how many doors? It opens two doors. The first door is when Jesus what? Ascends to heaven. The door to the holy place is opened where the seven branch is and where the altar of incense and the bowls of incense are. That's where Jesus goes in before his father. And then in the church of Philadelphia, and according to Revelation 11 verse 19, another door is open in heaven. That's the temple, uh, the temple door to the inner shrine, to the naos. And when that door is opened with the key, what is seen in the temple? The Ark of the Covenant. Let me ask you, must the first door have been closed when the second door was opened? Obviously, yes. Because the whole heavenly host is actually leaving the first apartment and they're moving where? Then they're moving to the second apartment of the sanctuary. Are you with me so far? Now, you say this is all academic. It's academic, but it's extremely important. Because if we don't understand this, the spirit of prophecy tells us that we will be caught and swept away by the delusions of Satan in these last days. Now this scene is described also in the book of Daniel. The opening of the heavenly temple for the judgment and for Jesus to take the kingdom is also mentioned in Daniel chapter 7. Now go with me to Daniel chapter 7 and as you're looking for that chapter let me ask you this. Was the most holy place the location where the judgment took place. On the great day of atonement, is that when the separation was made? Yes. Does the covenant contain the law by which God's people are judged? We will be judged by the perfect law of liberty. So when Revelation eleven nineteen says that the temple of God was opened, obviously with the key of David, is there a work of judgment that's going to take place in there because of the ark of co the covenant being there? Obviously, yes. Now, notice Daniel chapter 7 and verses 9 and 10. And do you know when this is taking place? Let me just give you a little historical context. In Daniel 7, you have a lion, you have a bear, you have a leopard, you have a terrible dragon beast. The dragon beast sprouts ten horns, and then among the ten horns rises a little horn, and the little horn rules 1,260 years. I've this before. The lion is Babylon, the bear is Medo-Persia, the leopard is Greece, the dragon beast is Rome, the ten horns represent the ten divisions into which Rome was divided, the little horn represents the Roman Catholic papacy, which rules from 538 to 1798. Now listen, to, listen up to what I'm going to say, because this is critically important. According to what we're going to read in Daniel 7, verses 9 and 10, this takes place after the little horn has ruled for 1,260 years. Now when did that rule come to an end? Which date? 1798. Which means that the scene that we're going to read about must take place after which date? It must take place after 1798. Because it's after the rule of the horn that this scene that we're going to read about takes place. Let me ask you, would that be very similar to the period of the Church of Philadelphia? Is this towards the end of the history of the Christian church? Obviously, yes. Now, notice what we find in Daniel chapter 7 and verses 9.